I'm Dr. Elizabeth Milovidov, and I want to stress the doctor part because I think it's important that we step up and we claim it. Already she's nodding her head. <laughs> exactly. Um, and so um, just to let you know briefly who I am, uh, I'm a lawyer. I'm an American lawyer. Hello there, taking pictures in the back. I see you. Come on. Come and sit up here. Um, is that... Um, I'm a lawyer from the United States, so from California, and I have been living in, uh, working in France for the past 27 years. Um, I also have an MBA, a master's degree, a PhD, which is why I want you to say doctor, and it's in children's rights. Um, so I just think that online safety and just this whole future of tech about what we're doing online is just really crucial. And um, I have been in this space for the past 10 years, um, doing things like consulting for the Council of Europe, for Google, for Instagram. In fact, I would say uh, just Google my name and you will see some of the, the works and the things, the videos, again, always on online safety and child protection. So today is going to be a little bit different because not only do I want to talk about child safety online, what I do at the Lego group, um, the future of play, the metaverse. I also want to inspire you. I want you to um, walk out of here and say, yeah, yeah, um, tech, child online safety, I'm needed because you, you are needed. So let me get us started here. Let's see, got more people coming in. So one of the things that I want to stress is um, for the Lego group that play, play is at the heart of emotional well-being and mental health. So think about it yourselves, right? When you were a kid and you were playing and you were out there, I'm not gonna date myself, right? Talking about the big wheels and, and all those types of things that we had, but whatever toys and things that you did, when you were out running the streets, you were having fun. You were just playing, you were going wild. Um, you felt good. Well, free play is another type of play. Um, this is just the idea that children themselves, that you yourself decide what you want to do. It's unstructured. You pick, you choose, you go, right? And so we say this is critical to the, um, to the balanced development of children because we want them to be able to pick and choose. This is also critical in the digital world, and I'll explain that in a second. So very simple, on, I think you can see uh, on the, the slides there, two plus two, right? We all know the answer, of course we do. But when we start talking about being creative, being open-ended, um, free play. There are all sorts of different ways to get there, right? We know we want four, but we can do it this way. We can do seven minus three and still get there. <gasps> you can do two times two, right, and still get there. For me, this is also diversity, a crazy way to look at diversity. If we have different people in the room bringing their perspectives, you can arrive at some same conclusion, but through a different way. That's another reason why your voices are definitely needed in the tech space. So at the Lego group, play matters. So what you're seeing there are just some bricks, you know, um, kind of uh, put together like a spaceship, right? And you have to be able to imagine it, to be able to think these things. So what is the future of play? What are we even talking about? Well, at the Lego group, we have definitely realized that um, children were on playgrounds. Uh, this was the, the first thing that they were doing, hanging out. We also had the brick, uh, et cetera. And that now this has gone to a digital playground. So social media, online video games. How many of you uh, uh, social media accounts? Just let me raise your hand. Oh, see, look at that, everybody. How many of you have read the terms and conditions? Uh-huh, see, see? If you haven't done it and you are adults, how are we gonna expect our children to do it, right? To know how to keep their data protected, how to use that privacy button. How many of you are on Snapchat? How many of you are using ghost mode? One, up two, okay, there we go. And at least some people are looking around like, what is ghost mode? Okay, well, ghost mode is a way for you to be private, right? So there's so many things that even as adults, we're not always thinking about. Online video games, who's gaming? Okay, Bass, put your hand down. You put your hand up for every single thing, okay. Who, who, who else is gaming, anybody? anybody? Oh, thank you so much, thank you. Okay, so we've got our online video games. Tell me this, have you ever seen anything, I'll say, racist, offensive, inappropriate in a video game? Oh yeah, all the, oh, he's just said all the time. Ooh, I didn't have to even give you the microphone and I could read your lips on that one. 
Now, this is an adult who's able to use critical thinking and to understand that this is offensive content. What happens when it's our children, right? Um, networking. I mean, the, there are all sorts of fabulous things that we can do online. Creating connections, meeting people. The fact that we just came out of a pandemic. We had two years of uh, being able to talk to each other, uh, to Zoom, to Skype, etc. Um, creative connections, as I said, uh, just the idea that we can connect. Uh, the fact that I can still do webinars, they're, they're recording this, it's going to be shared around. You know, and what else? There's so much more that we don't even know. But again, when I was talking about Lego, it's the brick, right? How many of you have stepped on a brick? <laughs> Sorry, I always ask that because it's, it's just kind of funny. Um, to me, I've stepped on them too. I'm a mother of two boys, I didn't mention that. They're 12 and 15. So even though really at the heart of Lego, 90 years, right? 90 years of play, 90 years of the brick, we are really seeing this evolution. So we are upping our game as far as our digital investments, our digital transformation, because we see where children are playing, where they want to be. But just like the brick is a product that is so safe, that's also how we want the digital play from the Lego group to be, which is kind of my job, so it's really fun. So inspiring and developing the builders of tomorrow. This is just a screenshot from our website, which really shows the heart of it. This is what we think, this is what we do. And again, as I look at all of the different faces of color here, I want to remind you that we're talking about the builders of tomorrow. We need all of you to help us build that tomorrow. It says Lego Play starts to release a child's potential from the moment they pick up their first brick. And that is exactly what we want to see continue when they're in the online world as well. Oops. No, I'm okay. So this is just showing you a picture of something that you probably haven't thought about, but we already have Lego products that are digital, right? There are already things like Mindstorms, Mario Brothers. They've been out for 25 years, right? But we also always think about what can we do? What do we need to do to build a better tech future for kids? It's fine that we've started, um, that we're really looking into um, children themselves, having them participate, having them help us develop, getting their voices to create a world that they want. But what do we need? Obviously, we need to do a lot more as adults because children have that right. And this is me with my lawyer's hat on telling you. Children have a right to play in a safe digital environment. And we as adults have the responsibility to bring it to them. So I also wanted to just keep showing, it's not like I'm doing a, a marketing ad here, but I still want to show you all these Lego digital products. And I think part of the reason I want to show you is because even before I worked, started working at the Lego group, I did not know that there were as many as there, there are. How many of you knew that we had like digital things? Anybody? Oh, look at that. Everybody's like, no. Oh, one hand in the back. One little sad hand in the back. I saw it. I saw it. Okay. And I think that's amazing because it means we have to do a little bit more, right? We have to really let you know that we have Lego games. We even have the first um, social network, I'll say, it's called Lego Life uh, for kids six to nine, absolutely safe, um, pre-moderated content, but I go too far. Here's a picture showing you what Mindstorms looks like, right? So kids can invent, they can create robots by using Scratch. How many of you know Scratch coding? <gasps> A few, yeah, okay. So all of these things are things that we want to introduce um, our children to. Okay, there's also Ninjago movie the, from the game, the video game. There are tons of Lego video games um, that are all, of course, child-friendly, uh, hoping children will engage in responsible play. So, here we go. Now we're getting to the good stuff, right? Because you're thinking, oh, she's just going to talk about Lego and bricks the entire time. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm going to go a little bit off script, and I hope that I have a job when I go back. <laughs> but how can we ensure that the digital experiences for children are inclusive, right? How can we ensure that children have responsible play? We have to show up. It's just that simple. You have to be in the room. You have to help design some of these play experiences. You have to help write the scripts. You have to um, help create the movies, right? Because otherwise, we're, we're not represented. And otherwise, little children. How many of you saw the ad where the little girl just went absolutely crazy seeing the black mermaid, the black Disney mermaid singing? Really, we're in 2022. While that was a beautiful, touching moment, that should not happen, right? We should already be there. We should already be represented. It shouldn't be a big deal. 
Um, when I was a little girl, no, there, we didn't have black, black princesses or anything like that. Um, but there, we have them now. And we also need um, black Disney, black Lego mini figurines. We need all the black heroes that are beyond Black Panther because they did just release that set, which is great. So um, what else can we do? So when, for me to make sure that things are inclusive, this is part of my job dealing with child online safety, right? Because we cannot, as we, you just mentioned about the video games, right? Um, with hearing inappropriate content, hearing racism, hearing misogynistic uh, terminology, that's because we get in our bubbles. We get in our little worlds and we think it's just us and people start saying these different things and they think it's okay. It's not okay. And so um, you guys are gonna laugh, I know you hear my American accent, but one of the things that cracks me up every time I get on the tube is seeing that little sign that says, see it, say it, sorted. It just cracks me up because I'm like, I can use that for everything. And so it's really true, I need you to show up. We cannot make change if we're not even in the room. It's just that simple. So you have to apply for those jobs. Um, you have to go to that interview if you don't think, oh, I'm not that qualified. You have to just walk in there with all that finesse and, and confidence saying, you know what, let them tell me no. Let them tell me no, right? Okay, I, I probably won't have a job. <laughs> it's okay. You will. That's the important part, right? For the next generation, you will. Um, so let me tell you just a little bit about what I do. So child online safety. So I'm digital uh, child safety senior manager. So I'm the global lead for anything that's to do with child online safety. So that means that for all of our digital experiences, digital engagements, even if we're talking um, a YouTube channel um, where there's Lego friends or something like that, they will ask me, is this safe? And you know what I'm usually saying when I see some of these products and games? I say, where's the people that look like me? Where, where is the, the language that is inclusive? Um, my niece has Down syndrome, so I'm always thinking about her as well. We have to think about everyone. Um, I know you're all too young for that MC Hammer song talking about crabs in a, in a basket and we're not letting anybody up. We have to stop doing that, right? We have to let each other up and then we have to reach down and pull somebody else up with us. And I'm not just talking about people of color, I'm talking about everyone that is not already seating at the table. Because there are a lot of people that are not, they don't have a seat at the table. Okay, so what else do I do with child online safety? Well, I talk to parents, I talk to kids. I'm just always trying to make sure that people are safe online. Because guess what, the future, that's what we're, what we're doing. Everything, all the time, we're online. And if we cannot get online without being insulted, without um, you know, seeing some sort of misogynistic comments, then what kind of world are we creating? What kind of metaverse are we creating? So again, one of the things that I'm always trying to do is to ensure positive interactions and addressing harmful content, conduct. This is just so simple. You all learn this in grade school. You learn this in first grade, kindergarten, which was being kind, playing, sharing your toys, right? Having empathy for someone else. If somebody's Lego creation breaks in front of us, we don't just laugh and say, <laughs> you know, it's empathy. It's, oh, can I help you pick that up? Can I help you share? It's the same thing when we're online. And now I'm talking to you as adults because, you know, I usually talk to children. But when you see something, when you see, you know, colleagues or an email or even your own girlfriends or boyfriends, you know, with messages that are just, you know, limit, Call them out, you know, do that see it, say it sorted bit, but use humor. You can always deflect in a way because we have to kind of nip this stuff in the bud. And the reason why I say this is as an American, I have seen the past four or five years in the United States, we have just become toxic, have we not? You can read any newspaper and just see politicians saying all sorts of things, um, you know, leaders saying all sorts of things. We are permitting ourselves to say some of these things and there's no reason for it. So it goes back to that sort of being kind, making sure we have positive interactions and addressing that harmful conduct. Online safety, it is not just passwords. It is not just talking about cyberbullying. Everyone always thinks that, oh, I have a safe password. I'm like, that's, that's not what I do, right? I'm really, like I said, trying to dig deeper, trying to have us think about our digital well-being, having us think about how long we're online, our children are online. Um, you know, how many of you get, get sucked into that scrolling where you just keep looking at something on social media? You know you need to go to bed. You know you need to get to work up, just laughing in the front row. You know you have other things that you should be doing, and yet you just can't get, you can't, you're hooked, right? 
So again, it's all of this sort of being conscious about making all these responsible choices. This is what we're all doing to create a better online world. So what have we learned, right? We're getting ready to reach for the metaverse. We are getting ready to um, do something that people have been dreaming about, talking about. Just a quick reminder, the metaverse, first of all, nobody really knows what it is, okay? So I'm not gonna sit up here and define it like I know because I don't. Um, no one does. Anybody who tells you they know, they don't know. And you can tell them that I said that they don't know. Um, we really think of it as metaverses. And it's just this idea that we can be in one place, virtual, uh, doing all sorts of things, interacting. But it was based on a novel, if I'm not mistaken, 1972 novel, and it was a dystopian society. It was a society that did not work. This is where the, the metaverse idea came from. And yet here we are hurtling along, going for it, and that's why I'm saying we need you to help make it better. We need you to, to transform it from this idea, and we can do that if we learn from the lessons in the past. So what are some of those lessons? So just going back a little bit, January 2018, anybody remember this? No? Go on to Google, they, and uh, unfortunately they had artificial intelligence that was labeling black people as gorillas. So if you went on and you were searching and then there you go, you saw a gorilla, right? This was 2018. 2018. My mother grew up in the south of in Tennessee, went through the civil rights movement. She, if she, God bless her soul, she would be appalled to know that we are still in an epic a time when this kind of stuff is happening. June 2020, Snapchat filters, right? This is Juneteenth, so we're gonna smile and break the chains. They immediately apologized. They said it was racist filter. You don't remember this? I guess I'm the only one <laughs> that's online all the time. Um, so lots of things like this, you know, that are out there and that are happening. But please, don't misunderstand me. As I show you these very negative examples, they are just s small, right? It's not like this happens every single day on every single platform. So please realize this is just an example to show you what is out there, what can be out there. It's like when we talk about child online safety and people think, oh my gosh, you know, it's just all these criminals and, and creepy people wanting to talk to children. Obviously that's not true. Uh, that's just not, that's not true. But like I said, I do want to show these examples. October 2021, New York Times. Now we're at Facebook. Uh, they apologize after AI is putting primate labels on videos of black men. So they keep getting in their feed saying, do you want to see more primates? Do you want to see more primates? And it's just, you know, showing black men. Um, Facebook themselves said this was an unacceptable error. You tell me if there are more of us in the design room, if there are more of us sitting there dealing with the algorithms, dealing with the AI, more of us that are teched up to the max, these errors aren't going to happen because we're going to see it, say it, Short it, right? We're gonna be in the room saying, oh, there's a problem here, there's a problem. Um, it's not over. July 2022, <clears throat> robots that were trained in AI. This, this one's really interesting because of course we're also interested in robots, but they did this study, I think this is from the Washington Post. Um, they, yeah, you see the WP on the side. They did a study and it was showing that the robots, they learn to become racist. That if you ask the robot, you sh um, say, you know, show them a picture or ask them what does a housekeeper look like, they will automatically point to the picture of a black woman. If you ask them what is a, the criminal, they will point to the picture of a black man. I'm not making this up, right? This is the digital world that we are in and that we're living in and which is why it is so, so important for all of you to bump up your game with that science, that tech, uh, that math, those crazy skills. And if that's not your thing, that's okay. If you are an artist, then draw. If you like words and you wanna be a lawyer, then go do law. But we need you, we have to have a seat at the digital table. So I also want to make sure that I show you positive things. So this is also from Facebook. They have things, they have resources. Um, do you know about them? Do you use them? And this is for all of the platforms. You can put Safety Center on any of these platforms. And I know because I have helped them develop some of them where they have provided the resources. They want your business. They want you to use their, their things responsibly. They don't want to have uh, these sorts of issues. 
So I, I urge you to, to really go out there, dig it up, and look. And I, I'm just wondering about time. Nobody's flagging me, so I'm okay. I'm going to keep going. Let's keep going until they pull me off the stage. Um, so what can you do, right? What can you, uh, right as I say pull me off the stage, she shows up. <laughs> Great, thank you. So what can you do to create a robust digital environment, right? Obviously, uh, I've been saying it time and time again, we need you to be involved. Yes, the Lego group, in my honest opinion, I've been there now one year, um, is ahead of the game. Uh, as far as how they are looking at um, attacking the, the digital experiences and digital engagements. So ahead of the game that one of my projects is looking at trying to change the narrative, right? So when we talk about being online, we talk about screen time. We talk about, um, occasionally we'll say screen balance. But for me, I'm looking at something called digital well-being. Looking at ways that when you are online, you feel good. When you get off, you feel good right? That's huge. Can you imagine if you're in your social media feeds, you're on your online video games and you feel good? And you also feel good, but you know that you can get off, that you don't have to stay on because there's a reward tomorrow, that there's a loot box that you have to open up. No, you just, you get off because you know what? You, you had your dose today and you do this and your neck is good. Your eyesight is fine. How many of you know that children are becoming more and more nearsighted? Yes, they are. Look at the statistics. Just do this for me. Everybody just do this. Uh-huh. Do you feel some, uh, yeah. Is it, can you feel it? I know you can't. I know, I do this all the time. And everybody's like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize. It's because we're, we're walking around like this with our heads down most of the time. Even if you just move your thumbs around. Try that one. Just move your thumbs. Yeah, I know, right? You didn't think I was gonna make you do yoga. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's not that, it's just being aware. So that is one of my projects at uh, the Lego Group. And we, we need that, especially as we just go hurtling into a whole nother uh, idea, a whole nother version of, of what being online should look like. So um, I wanted to share this just because I, I always like uh, telling stories as I, as I talk to you. So this just came out last year, um, yesterday, sorry. So. Um, Everybody know reparations? This is the idea that, um, this is from the United States, okay, I'm sorry to bring my American, but it, it was in the BBC, so it's okay. Um, so way back when, when there was slavery uh, in the United States and after the slaves were freed, um, there was this idea that, that people, that slaves would receive reparations, that they would receive some sort of money, some sort of compensation for the damages that they had um, um, succumbed to, if you would like. And um, this became so famous, this idea, this expression, that we started saying that black people would get 40 acres and a mule, which is what you would need to help farm your own land, right? Great, great idea. This is why I think even Spike Lee, the African-American director, his production company is called 40 Acres and a Mule. Might have to fact check me on that, but I think that's right. So this idea of reparations, in the United States, black people are talking about this all the time. Reparations, reparations, reparations. We're going to get ours. We're going get, to get, get it paid back. I'm here to challenge you again, hoping that I have a job. Bass, I'm going to say it's your fault if they, <laughs> they fire me. I'm going to challenge you and say it's not about reparations. It's about repair Asians. Let's repair the future before we have to get there and start saying, oh, well, you know, you owe us damages. You owe us something. They, nobody owes anything. It's up for us to get into the room to repair what we already see. So when you're playing those online video games and somebody starts making those snarky remarks, you're going to repair it. When you're on social media and you see somebody, something and somebody's saying, you're going to repair it, right? You knew I had to do it. You knew I had to do it, right? As I keep telling you all the time, I need you all to show up. Even at the Lego group, I would be really happy to see more of your faces there uh, in every single department, bringing all the ideas and the creativity. And as you walk around in all of these different booths, just realize that these companies are not here uh, for any sort of tokenism. They are here and not for corporate social responsibility. They're here because it's the right thing to do. We all need to show up if we're going to be in this tech future. And I wanted to um, show you just another image of kids playing. 
Um, it was John F. Kennedy who had said, I think it was in 1960 something, that children are um, a, a source of uh, inspiration. And um, actually he said children are the resources, resources for the future, I'm sorry. And I'm saying, yeah, they're going to be a source, a source of inspiration. And we have to think about the fact that we're doing this not just for ourselves, we're doing it for children. We're doing it for their future. If you feel a little, eh, uh, when you're playing that video game or when you're on social media or when you're doing anything else, and if you're feeling it, imagine for a child who does not have your critical thinking skills, who doesn't have the distance, this is what we're talking about. And so when I sit here and say, you know, to see it, say it, sort it, and to show up, I am seriously leaving you my contact information because I think it's important that we all stick together with this, that you continue to network, you make as many connections as possible. You know, I don't have a job for you, I don't. I don't have anything in my department, but I might know people who know people who can help you. It is only by being connected, by, shall we say, all playing golf together or all going and doing something else together that we can help all of us together. Okay, so um, I see all the pictures are taking now. <laughs> That's fine. Are there any questions? I hope so, because I love this topic. I'll happily give you the microphone if you want to talk about um, metaverse. Yeah. You want to talk about child online safety? Sure. And, and Thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, my name is Kwame. I also work at the Lego Group. Just been here for about five months myself. Um, I'll be interested to hear some examples of some of the innovation that's happened within your sort of department yes. in terms of how you spotted those dangers, yes. challenged it, and some of the solutions you provided to sort of move it along. Yeah, well, again, what's great, again, is this sort of see it, uh, say it sorted, right? So the idea is that you have to be in the room. There are lots of things that I don't know about, lots of projects that I don't see. But for example, someone once brought me a, uh, I helped do game reviews. They brought me a game review and they said, um, we're talking about this game, we're, we're uh, redrafting some of our policy on uh, DNI. And what do you think? And I was like, well, you know, you can't just lump it all together. These are all different circumstances. And the, the guy was like, well, what do you mean? And I said, listen, just because we put a black minifigure in a game and we have diversity and that black minifigure can't play in that game, then there's not inclusion. <gasps> light bulb moment, right? And it's like, oh, you need to come to more of the meetings. And I was like, invite me, right? But there's only me. When we're talking about um, accessibility and some of the others as well, um, it's the same sort of issue. It is that, I hear the microphone somewhere. <laughs> Somebody has it, who had it? It's the same sort of issue about um, uh, accessibility. And it's, and it's not for us to always you know, fight for ourselves. We have allies. You know, there are people here uh, who do not look like us, who are allies, who are fighting for us. And I think that's something that's really important, not to get into that bubble. Again, if I can use the civil rights movement as an example, black Americans were trying for a very long time, very long time, and they didn't get anywhere until white Americans stood with them, did the parades, did the marches. You might have heard about the gay rights movement, right? Um, gays were fighting for lots of things too, and it wasn't until um, HIV went into the heterosexual community and we had everybody fighting together that we were able to see some changes. So it is the same as we head into the metaverse. We have to bring everybody up with us together, especially, and I know you don't want to hear me start talking about the digital divide, but the fact that there are some people who have technology and access to fast technology and some people who don't, we will be leaving behind whole generations, if not whole continents. So see it, say it, sort it, show up, show up. <laughs>